morning, good afternoon, good evening, Fabulites. I have got questions for you. What opens with mom picking up the triplets to discuss a temporary situation and what closes with mom and the triplets in a permanent situation? If you guess This Is Us season two, episode one, you're correct. Do I have a name for it? It probably has a name, I can't remember. The video vixen is back, Miss Bella. Yay! Yay! She wanted to be on camera, I guess, today. Um, if you guessed This Is Us, you're correct. I'm Angela. The channel is Be Fabulous You. Thank you for clicking on the video and sticking around to see how we get from opening to closing. So let us begin. So um, we have sort of a voiceover. First, we get imagery of um, Randall's birth dad, William, um, reading his poetry. He's written a, a, some work he's done specifically dedicated to his son. Um, and so he, at this moment of reading, is alive. We know in, in real life he has already made his transition. But what is real life in the This Is Us world? Because we flip back and forth so much that, you know, what's real and what's not real and what is past and present and future is all one we see the mom picking up the three um teens the teens the triplets as, as teens and um kate is like what's mom doing back because at the end of last season mom had gone on tour for her music career she was singing in clubs with her ex-boyfriend and a band and her husband had gone her husband what's her husband's name daddy jack had gone looking for them and um they had gotten into this big fight because her daddy jack happened upon her ex-boyfriend hitting on her and so he hit the guy literally the ex-boyfriend was hitting on her figuratively but he hit the guy literally and then she not on tour anymore so they had had this big argument but the children didn't know that because they were theoretically out at a party so the, Kate is like, uh, well, why? what's mom doing back? And then we see um, a 36, 37-year-old Randall loving up on a baby. Um, talking about, I've got baby fever. Um, and the parents are like, uh, can we have our baby so we can go on about our business? And then we see 36, 37-year-old um, um, Miss Kate. Um, that's the female triplet, triplet um, the, the, the twin, um, preparing for um, an audition with her fiancé. Her fiancé is helping her prepare, and it's they, her birthday. It's a celebration. He got, uh, you know, cupcake and sparkle or whatever. He, he's, he's a good, fun partner. Um, so if you don't know the concept of the show or if you do know the concept of the show last season when it opened if you haven't watched go back but last season when it opened we met these three people who were all celebrating birthdays um, eventually we didn't really know what the connection was or what the issue was I thought it was going to be a, a show about people who share the same birthday but it turns out that these people all grew up together um, one woman um, and uh, one family one mother and father had been pregnant with triplets in delivery one triplet had been lost at the same time that that one triplet was lost another child was um, was brought into um, the hospital who had been found at a fire station so the father convinced the mother or the parents decided to adopt that child who was born on the same day as their two children they had already prepared for triplets they were mourning the loss of the one baby but they adopted this other baby this is a white family that's the main family but the child that they adopted is black so that's a whole nother dynamic and then one of the so it's two boys and a girl a, a white boy a black boy or a white they're men and sometimes you see them as boys sometimes you see them as teens sometimes you see them um as adults and then there's one woman or girl um child her name is kate kevin is a, a performer um he was on a tv show like a sitcom he's done a little bit of broadway um but he's kind of struggling he's kind of like the quote unquote growing up he was the normal one the one who theoretically didn't have any trouble so he kind of reads as a middle child and kind of having middle child issues um randall being a black child growing up in a white family had some issues related to that and then miss kate had some issues with her weight that started relatively early and she, she continues to kind of deal with that among other things and they're all really in a way struggling with the death of their father 
Meanwhile, the black son did reconcile with his birth father and um, as his birth father was about to make his transition. So he did have an opportunity to spend, you know, it seemed like it was maybe two or three or seven months, something like that with his father. He's married. He has two children. So they all kind of had an opportunity to build a relationship with his father. Okay, so that's Randall, the black guy, Kevin, the white guy, Kate, the white woman. Okay. So then we see um, Kevin on knee making a proposal and um, he's um, um, he's on set, we find out, for a Ron Howard film. It's burning up in here. Let me turn this, adjust this heat. He's on set for a Ron Howard film and the cast or crew or just the crew gives him a birthday cake with his face on it and they sing happy birthday. So it's all happy, happy day, happy day, happy day. Then we see the teen children arriving at the diner. Remember, the mama had picked them up, so now they've arrived at the diner. This show does a lot of flashbacks, so you just, we gonna try to keep up. So they're arriving at the diner, and the father is there. Daddy Jack is there, and Daddy explains that you know what had happened was is that your mama was on tour, and I came to surprise her, and then the man was acting inappropriate, and so we got into a fight, and then um, Kevin looks at his dad's knuckles and sees that you. You know they're bruised because he was fighting and then um so you know blah 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 and then um the mother is like um so we are taking a moment to catch our breath and the kids are like what what are you talking about the girl leaves kate leaves and then kevin is like uh and his father is like gone and follow her because you know you want to follow her and then um you know randall is sitting there and, and and the daddy jack is like hey buddy randall and randall is like buddy ha huh? And he gets up and leaves too. Then we see 36, 37 year old Randall at home with his baby girls. Happy birthday. Hey, daddy. How come mommy goes to work and you stay home now and you're the girl? At the end, he had a job when we met him. He's like a high powered. I don't know what field he's in, but he's he's successful. But he had dealing with his father's transition. He had um, kind of got distracted um, with things going on at work. They had brought someone in who was supposed to be working with him, but it was almost a competitive situation from his perspective. And he ended up, you know, falling down, like not being able to meet some commitments because he was focused on his father. That ended up being his real priority, although he was used to work always being his priority. So I, I think he quit the job. He lost the job. I don't really remember, but apparently he's not there. And the children are like, what's up, daddy? Why are you a girl? And then Randall... <laughs> Um, you know, the mom comes in from running and um, Randall calls the girl Stacy Dash and Omarosa. I guess he's trying to say they're regressive. Um, black regressive um, women. And then um, Randall is all hype about the day. He's like, yes, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be the best day ever. We're going to have this appointment. Woohoo! And Mama Beth, that's the, the, his wife. She's very dry. She's like, yeah, I'm going to go take a shower. And I'm like, is that her personality? Because her personality is on the drier side, but she was dry. Um, then we see 36, 37-year-old Kevin. He's leaving the set. He's got about half that cake left. Um, his ex-wife, who's his new girlfriend, he was married and divorced. And now he's courting the woman who was his ex-wife. So that's his new girlfriend. They video chat. He like, you're not on the plane. She like, no, you know, my mom was having an episode. Her mother has some kind of chronic illness. I couldn't leave. I can't leave. I feel guilty. I feel bad. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be there for your birthday. Boo-hoo-hoo. Okay. So, um... Womp womp. He's disappointed. He looks at the cake. He happens to be by a garbage can. He just go on and throw the cake out. Then we see 36. I think they're turning 37 this year. So I, I couldn't remember. It was 36, 37. But anyway, grown 36, 37 year old Kate and her fiance Toby, they getting her audition outfit together because she is auditioning for the 17th best wedding band in LA. I'm like, they going through all of this for a wedding band audition. But then I guess as the show progress, I'm like, I guess this is LA. So if you're a really good wedding band, then you're probably performing for executives in the business and other people. So I guess it's a big deal. It sure seemed like a big deal. Okay. Um, and he's, and you know, she's, you know, they had a whole exchange and she basically like, you know, you make me feel sexy. It's really nice to see their, their love affair. It's nice to see, you know, bigger people 
you know, being people, being human beings on the screen. Um, just like it's always nice to see black people being human beings on the screen. Okay, so then um, they are just about to have sex. And who come opening the door but Kevin with the emergency key that Toby had given him. Toby ain't give him that key to just come in willy-nilly. But he come in. Um, they We find out that his girlfriend is not coming. Um but he's coming they still having the dinner and kevin is like let me see your outfit for the audition and um he like well i don't know you look like the girl who trying too hard mm -mm. and toby is like wait we like this outfit we approved it but then kate and kevin go into their twin brother sister triplet thing and toby is like on the outside they go work out a whole nother outfit um, so then we see, um, Jake at, um, Miguel. Miguel is daddy, um, Jack's best friend, work colleague. And also he ends up being the mother, um, the mother's, um, the, tw the triplet's mother ends up marrying this guy, Miguel. So, um, but right now, this is back in the day when daddy, when the children were teens and Jack is like, you know, no, I don't need no sheets because I'm not going to be here long enough to need sheets. Um, then we see the triplets as a teen, as teenagers with their mom, they in the kitchen, everything is all so somber and dry. And the mom is like, Hey, we going to the movies. We going to have fun right now. And the kids are like, oh, but then they go to the movies. Then we see 36, 37 year old, um, Randall and his wife at an adoption meeting. You know, they meeting with an adoption counselor and Randall is up. He excited. He, he hype. He all the way up. Um, and wifey is like unenthusiastic obviously so and the adoption counselor even comments on it like well it's not unusual for one part of the couple to be more excited than the other part of the couple and randall is like oh we're all excited we're just so exciting excited blah 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 like he's just oblivious to what's going on with miss wifey and then until until Miss Wifey is like, um, oh, you know, my husband, he wants a boy. He wants a boy um, because he was a boy when he was adopted. And he wants to adopt to honor his fathers who have made their transition. And, um, you know, do you happen to have any kids that are laying around that were found laying around a fire station? Because that would really um, scratch my husband's itch. And then she gets up and leaves. So it's obvious to him. Uh, us and to the adoption lady that they got issues but his behind randall is like well you can see we're not afraid of candid conversation he's so silly <laughs> um and then she's out in the parking lot he come up on her he like you fake smoking randall comes up on his wife beth and beth is like yeah and randall joins her they fake smoking pretending to smoke who do that <laughs> Um, we learn that he is developing a weird pattern from his wife's perspective of making decisions without her input, with no regard for her. And Randall is like, look, you need to get your head around this because this is what I need to do. I'm, we're adopting a child to honor my father, my fathers. And um, she leaves. She like, you, look, I'm not throwing down with you in an adoption parking lot, sir. Goodbye. And then um, we're at um, the audition. This is 37, 36 year old Kate. And there are a bunch of skinny women. I was going to say skinny biatches, but you know, slim, trim, Hollywood type singing, glamorous type, you know, young women um, who are there to audition. And she's flashing back to a moment in, that we saw in season one where she's at a pool and she about 10 or 12. And in that scene, the children, her girlfriends, her friends had given her a letter. One of them had given her a letter basically being like you too fat for us to be your friend something like that so it's kind of like a hurtful moment so she flashes back to that moment and then she get up and she lead the audition um then we see jack at miguel's then we see the mom as teen and um, with the chi with the triplets as teens there at the movies and the mom is between the two boys it's like kate kevin then the mom then randall and then randall is looking at the mom and he's flashing back to him leaving the party and going home and walking in unobserved on his parents fighting so when his mother had left the, the tour and the father had fought with the her ex-boyfriend and then they had come home randall had heard all of that they don't nobody know that randall heard it but randall heard it so he feel in a way kind of protective toward his mother because his father was kind of going in on her a little bit um 
And then he flashes forward to Randall offering popcorn to his mom. You know, he being real sweet and tender with her. And he's always kind of real sweet and tender with both of his parents in a way um, that, from what we've seen. And he's like, oh, you want some popcorn? And then his brother Kevin is looking and his brother turns to, to Kate. And he's like, um, I think Randall is finally about to make his move. And then Kate stares straight ahead. Like, she like, this is not funny. This is not a time for no joking. This is serious. Um, so, you know, you know. So then we see Randall, he 36, he 37, he arriving at his mom's house, his adopted mom's house, house, and he like, you know, what wifey Beth is not on board with the adoption. How did you guys decide? And um his mother is like, oh, I knew as soon as I saw you. And um, he's like, uh, that's a great story, mom. And she's like, uh, well, it's complicated. And he's like, well, it's complicated is uh, what folks say when they want to avoid the truth. And she's like, well, basically, she tell him that his dad had to talk her into it. And we have flashbacks of, you know, him willing her you know, she done had the two babies alive and one baby dead. She's being willed into the nursery. She's looking at their two babies. He's showing her Randall as a baby and saying how, um, you know, it's just significant that this baby is here. This baby is meant to be um, part of their family. And she's like, you know, your father kept pushing me. He was so determined. You know, sometimes in marriage, his mother is saying to the 36, 37-year-old him, you know, one person pushes for big moves. And usually that was your father in our marriage. And he pushed push a stranger on me and a stranger became my child and a ch that child became my life and that child became you and Randall was all blushy looking <laughs> like he loved him some of his mama his his white mama his white adopted mama who's just his mama to him um and then we see his um wifey Beth um and black birth daddy William so this is a flashback to before his birth father William had made his transition and we're at William's spot which is in a park and she's fussing about this round trip road trip to Memphis on which this is when um, the father William wanted to go on a road trip last season and he ended up dying on that road trip so he kind of wanted he knew he was gonna die it seems and he wanted to spend his last moments with his son and showing his son parts of his life I think he had grown up in Memphis so he introduced him to different people and showed him different stuff um, but this is before they went on the road trip, before the, the men went on the road trip. Beth is with um, Will, Daddy William at the park and they're talking. And um, he's um, he's like, you know, you know, he brought you home without ever asking me. And um, first you, then his brother. Um, and he just went ahead and did it, bullheaded, like father, like son. And William is like, well, it didn't turn out so bad, did it? Um, the things he pushed on you? And Beth is like, nah, you all right, old man. She's so cute. And then we see the dad in the park. Um, and he's like, you know, this park is a little less fancy than your neighborhood. And Beth is like, yeah, and a little less white. And then we flash forward to today and Beth is in that same park. And that's one of the things that we love about, that I love about the show. It's sort of like, you know, a lot of black people would be thinking that. And she said it and it's like, yeah, that's, that's a real thing. That that's something that I, you know, that at that moment just seemed very real to me. A lot of them do. Um, so then we see Kate and to and fiance Toby. So we know that's modern day. They're entering the restaurant for dinner. And um, what was supposed to be a double date has turned into a fancy booked up. You know, they were supposed to have a double date at this fancy restaurant that's like booked up months in advance. And Kevin, the movie star with his Hollywood connections, had got them in. And we find out as they're coming in that not only did he get them in, but he done cleared out the whole restaurant. He done bought up the whole restaurant. So it's just the three of them in there, which is a nice, you know, gesture. He's got the resources to do it. So, you know, it, it's it's cool. Um, but as they're going in, Toby is like, so how was the audition? What did you wear? What did they say when you did this? He trying to get all the details and be hype and excited and supportive of her. And she's like, oh, it's just like any other audition. Like Beth, um, um, not Beth, but Kate doesn't want to talk about it because her behind it and she left the audition and she ain't told Toby. Um, and so it's kind of like they get in and they like, uh, where's everybody at the restaurant? Is it supposed to be a popular restaurant? Why is it empty? And, you know, Kevin is like, I bought it out for us and this is a great restaurant. And then, you know, um, then, um, where are we at? Detailed in her audition. I already told y'all about that. Um, then they realize it. Da, 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 da. And then the fiance Toby is like, I want to toast 
um, oh, when he when he finds out that he bought out the restaurant, that Kevin bought out the restaurant, Toby is like, uh, so do you want your sister to sit next to you, across from you, or just go on ahead and sit on your lap? And Kevin is like, uh, she can sit across from me. But he, 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 we all pick up the shadiness of the situation. Um, and then, um, you know, but he don't really indulge in it. He ain't going to fight with this man. Oh, my God. It's so long going. Okay. And so then Kevin, okay. So then Kate is like, um, t Toby is like, you know, I want to make a toast to the birthday girl. And then Kate is like in the birthday boy. And Toby is like, uh, yeah. And he's like, I'm so proud of you. And then Kate is like, I didn't go to the audition. Um, and um, Toby is like, what? And then Kevin is like, I know. I was surprised when she told me earlier when it happened. And Toby is like, you told him? Wow, really? And then Toby leaves. And then we see Beth at her house. And Randall comes in um, with his, and he wants to make up for being a butthole speech. He got his speech all prepared. And he like, you know, I saw my mom and my father pushed her to adopt me. And I don't want to be them. You know, I love them, blah, 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 blah. I'm a perfectionist. You know, I fail. I'm failure leads to self-doubt and self-loathing and other stuff, blah, 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 blah. We are just our plans together. Um, I'll have to figure out another way, maybe volunteer or something. But if you're not with it, I'm not with it. And Beth is like raising her hand and she She's like, can I say something here? And then um, she takes him to, to her, his daddy's spot, Beth and Randall, or William's spot. And Beth gives Randall a bound um, copy of the collection of his father's works, the poems. It might be poems for my son or whatever. And then... Um, she like, you know, I've been here every day coming here to your father's spot, basically trying to figure out how to make you happy. You know, you want a perfect newborn. <clears throat> But if we're going to risk our perfectly imperfect life to honor your dads, then let's take in a kid like one of these children. And we see some kids in the park and they drinking and, you know, just out here. She like, let's take in a kid, an older kid or a child that no one else in the world is going to want. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so then we see Daddy Jack. He had a bar. He trying to book his, his wife for a gig. He done messed up. He trying to make up for it. And he's like, you know, um, could you remember my wife? Did? And the guy's like real dry, like, uh, we open at 8. Uh, we, what's going on? And the guy's like, yeah, you could book her. You know, book, book her. Um, you know, have my wife come in and do a gig, you know, maybe once a month. Oh, okay, I'll pay you. I'll pay you. And the guy is like, um... You know, look, you're embarrassing yourself. You're embarrassing your wife. We're booked months in advance, and we don't do no solo acts. Get out of here, Buster. And then we see Kevin. He's talking to Toby, and they're um, arguing. And Toby wants to be Kate's everything. I don't know why. You can't be everything for a woman, Toby. You know, it's good for her to have a support system that goes outside of you. And anyway, um, Kate walks up on the argument. And she's like, I don't want to be coddled and I don't want to be pushed by you or any man. I have to run my whole old life. And I'm basically going, you know, I'm a grown ass woman. I'm 37 years old and I don't need a man to push me. I'm going to the audition. And then we see Kate back at the audition and they like, you know, sorry, we're done. And Kate is like, you know, you have to listen to me. I'm a singer. I was here earlier, but I lost my nerve. And the guy is like, okay, go ahead and audition. What you want to sing? And she's like, and I was thinking, he like, ah, ah, three, two, one, play the music. And then she sings, ah, blah, blah, blah. And she's sounding good to me. And after a couple of seconds, he cut her off. He's like, okay, thank you. And she's like, okay. And then she's like, no, you will not dismiss me. Blah, 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 blah. And then you're going to hire a, a lesser singer because she smaller than me and I'm not gonna have it and then he like the guy who ran an audition is like uh come here um Amber and then Amber sing the same song she was singing and then Amber starts singing the song and it's like she sounds really really good he like okay that's enough Amber he like Amber she was our main singer but now she's our backup singer because she's not good enough and you know your pitch is good um your range is limited and you out of practice you um you are not good enough honey it ain't got nothing to do with your weight and she happy and we happy that you know we got that resolved Okay, so then we see Toby and Kevin, and he's like, um, you know, she told me my father died, like my sister Kate told me my father died. We're not just brother and sister, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm not that good of an actor. I'm not that good at anything, but being her brother is basically what I do, and I can't just cut the cord immediately because she met an amazing guy like you in um, um, court. 
um, Toby is like, I know, but uh, stretch the cord a little bit, bro. And then Kate comes in and she like, uh, that didn't really go that well. Uh, but it wasn't because of my size. It was because of my ability. And I can do this. And she's all energized. And then we see a montage of William speaking his poetry to his son. It's a loop back to what happened at the beginning. And then Kevin is leaving. Um as he's leaving Toby and Kate's place, his ex-wife girlfriend Sophie is waiting for him outside. So, she, aw, she did fly to be with him for his birthday. So he don't have to be alone or harassing the people. And then we see um, Toby and Kate practicing singing. And then we see Randall and Beth looking at a laptop. We, I guess they looking at children to adopt, maybe. Then we see the mama going to, um, to Michelle's. Oh, to Miguel's and this is back when the children were teens and she had put the daddy out and she knocking on the door of Miguel's and Jack is um you know Jack she's like Jack you know we gotta do this um let's let's let us come on you know this is not us to be separated if we we gonna work this out together come on home you know you're not your dad you're not a drunk come on home and Jen Jack is like you know I can't you know you don't know everything about me I am drunk I'm drunk right now I've been drunk all day I've been drunk for the last two weeks or three weeks I got to get myself together on my own and he closes the door on her and it's like womp womp and it goes dark and then we hear her knocking and then she's like get in the car get in the car Jack Jack you're my husband Husband and I am your wife you come home if you got a problem then we got a problem and we're gonna fix it together and then you know they're in the car and she's like everything is gonna be fine a few months from now everything will be back from normal and then we see the mama driving and then it like pans to the passenger side and there's nobody in the passenger side and it pans down and we see personal effects we already know from last season that the daddy is dead we just don't know how the daddy died we still don't exactly know at this moment but we see the personal effects like a plastic bag with his ring and other stuff in it and then um we see Kate holding a dog teenage Kate holding a dog and she's crying and then Randall is sitting next to her and his hand is being held by a red-headed girl and he's crying and they're at Miguel's house he's like uh here's some sheets and then uh Kate is like wait to her brother Randall we gotta go find Kevin I have to be the one to tell him and then we see a shot of Kevin in his cast and then we see um um, the mama pulling up at the at a place and then we see the Pearson mailbox the family is the Pearson family mama Pearson and then um, we see her crying and she's wailing Wah! and then it pans out and we see that the house is burned up it's not burnt down it's like a structure but it's like fully burnt so that's the end of the episode yay this is us is back we love it we love it we love it share this video thank you so much for watching subscribing we're working on 300 subscribers yay yeah, yay yeah, yay yeah, yay yeah, yay yeah. Um, like, comment down below. Um, today is the best day ever. Be you, be fabulous, be fabulous, you. Be you, be fabulous, be fabulous, you. Bye, boo, be you.